on the next generations. So Randy, thanks. And uh, we're gonna move on to our next, uh, next presentation here. So we have some USA Cycling staff uh, who have joined us and I'm gonna ask them, put them on the spot a little. Uh, I think I've seen everybody and ask them to, to give a brief intro. I think it's important that uh, they know, uh, that you know who they are and sort of what they do. So for my crew, uh, and our crew, who's uh, about to go over, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll run through everybody. Justin and I are not going to contribute because uh, we've done so already. Uh, but just who you are, what your job is, and how officials will uh, interact with you. So Tara is on, Tara McCarthy. Tara, I'm going to spotlight you real quick. you mind uh, saying hi to everybody and saying what you do? Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Tara McCarthy. I think I know at least some of you that I can see. Um, I am the director of national events here at USA Cycling. And so I oversee all of our national championship properties. So um, that's from Collegiate Road, one of our smallest road events up to Pro Road, um, mountain bike national championships, cycle cross, BMX, freestyle BMX and track national championships. And I also oversee the scheduling of our international calendars here domestically. So our Pro Road Tour, our Pro CX calendar, our Pro XCT and National DH series. Um, and for those that do know me and I know you, um, we schedule and work with our officials, our licensed officials uh, at our national championships. And so we work to schedule folks from around the country in an effort to, to gain people some additional experience. Like Randy was saying, you know, Collegiate Road is much different than Pro Road, but we do strive to get different crews to each of our national championships in order to give you all experience at the next level, as well as the opportunity to work with people from around the country that you normally wouldn't get to see and interact with in your local or regional areas. Um, so Chuck, I think that pretty much answers who I am, what I do, um, and how the officials work with us. And I'll be here this whole session. So if you have any questions regarding national championships or our international calendars, please feel free to ask. Great, Tara. Thanks. And uh, next is uh, Stuart Lamp, who I believe was officiating a race yesterday. Uh, Stuart, you want to uh, give us a little intro? Yeah, so the, the weather's a lot better uh, today uh, inside than it was yesterday. At, Stewart, at that race. Stewart's, in Stewart's in Alabama now, by the way. So. Yeah, so, uh, so yesterday was a lovely 30-something uh, degree day with uh, rain. And uh, uh, good thing was we, we did have a lot of people attend. But uh, for, for those that don't know me, I'm the director of event services uh, at USA Cycling. And, and so uh, I work with uh, our event services team to work with grassroots uh, and, and just all events around the country. Uh, and, uh, and really our, our big focus is to try to uh, support the growth from uh, the grassroots level uh, and help with organizers as they plan events. Uh, I've been blessed to work with so many of you um, around the country, uh, whether that's through uh, the local association program and the signing officials uh, to uh, working uh, to help some of you come up through the ranks uh, and uh, support those efforts. And um, many of you have uh, helped me along the way um, in, in learning the sport in, in greater detail, uh, despite having uh, a background of racing. I think most everybody on this call knows that bike racers don't know the rules. Uh, so uh, sometimes you have to learn the hard way. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, with the, uh, with our team, you know, we're we're working to uh, you know help support everyone, uh, and that's not just the bike racer; that's the organizer, the officials, um, coaches, uh, everybody involved in making the wheels turn for people. So um, it's it's been good to be a part of this today uh, and and get to spend uh, time and see a lot of familiar faces on, on the call. So happy to support, and if anybody uh, has any questions or needs anything, uh, happy to uh, answer those. Great. Thanks, Stuart. And uh, I think the person who's gotten the most kudos is Valicia. And uh, Valicia, I'm going to ask you to at least say hi, and then you can get more, you can manipulate, monopolize the chat with people telling you how awesome you are, because you are. 
Um, I'm Felicia Frazier and I am the event services manager. So I'm kind of the one who helps you with your permits from start to finish with um, also with helping you get your insurance. Um, I've also been involved with helping with the official license. Um, and it's great to see everyone. This weekend has been a joy and thanks everyone for all the kudos. All right, thanks. And uh, aside from Rob, are there any other staff that I missed? Uh, by the way, I'm gonna start spotlighting all of our staff just so you're up front as we go into questions. And there's 125 people on here, so I may have missed any other staff. Uh, is there anybody else on here I missed? Just unmute and say so. Hi, Chuck, Booker here. Hey, Booker, you wanna uh, go over what you do? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hi, everybody, how are you? I'm Booker Poole. I am the uh, Chief Commercial Officer and uh, oversee the teams that work on membership, marketing and communications, sponsorships, uh, partnerships, um, and merchandise. So uh, a lot of elements within there, but mostly with you guys, uh, you know, getting communications out and working with Chuck and his team to get out any rule changes, anything that uh, needs to be put out to racers. Uh, and then most importantly is driving membership uh, driving people into getting their licenses and into events, uh, highlighting events that uh, come on board and are sanctioned through USA Cycling so that we can uh, fill categories and get as many people out racing and riding as possible when it's available. Great. Thanks, Booker. I apologize I didn't see you on there earlier. So. And last, Rob. Uh, Rob spoke yesterday. You just want to give a quick minute. We'll get into Q&A. Yeah, first of all, uh, you know, this staff that you're looking at right now is the engine that keeps this running. So thank you to, to all of the USAC staff. And uh, as I said yesterday, we're very appreciative of the officials and what they do, what you do for the sport. And many times you're the face of us. So we uh, would just say thank you for all the hard work you do. Great. Thanks, Rob. And I got a couple of questions via email uh, I'm going to go into and, uh, and uh, feel free to start putting... Uh, questions on chat and Sean and Elisa, the Brady Bunch and Hollywood Squares reference has been used a lot on internal staff meetings, which I see is up there now. Uh, I think it's more like, yeah, Brady Bunch. Uh, one question we had was regarding safe sport that came in over the weekend and basically why is that required and can we make it any less painful? Uh, we actually have uh, Kelsey Erickson who's uh, out of town today and couldn't be on uh, is our safe sport coordinator, as well as a ton of other things. You heard David talk about her earlier in the initiative she's done. The, uh, the safe sport program, you know, I think a lot of us had to go through that six or seven years ago when it first came out and it was extremely painful. Uh, what we've worked with safe sport to do is make that more relevant to non coaches. Uh, it was very much originally geared toward coaches and uh, uh, it, it tried to make that more general. Uh, we've also gone from a 90 minute every two year experience. And, and this isn't us, this is actually the Center for Safe Sport uh, to something that is a refresher. You take the original and then you have a, a refresher every year. Uh, that took me about 20 minutes. I took it a month ago, it took me about 20 minutes to get through. And uh, I think that's been the experience. It's gotten better. Uh, one thing, and I hate to use this term that has helped us and help people realize the importance of that is that uh, with everything that's happened with gymnastics uh, and, and some of the other sports, what our role is to protect youth and as officials in most states were mandatory reporters. That's something I actually didn't know until I took the safe sport training. So uh, we, have, uh, we have really worked hard to uh, encapsulate that in our policies and see it as a good thing. And I hope you all start to see that too, based on some of the things that have happened in, in the last few years. If you want more info, it's usacycling.org slash safe sport. It has all our policies and the take your testing. It's easy, it's safe sport.org. And that license or that certificate is transferable between all the national governing bodies and NICA will actually take it as well. So if you ever, have any questions on that feel free to send the officials email and we can connect you with Kelsey but I think we really see that as a uh, a super positive thing 
and I know it's a burden, like a lot of things are on us. Uh, one, Justin, we got that I'll kick to you is talk about mountain bike assignments and uh, what the status is on this. Yes, so uh, been working with Tara and the event directors the last really week, as you know, mo or as most of you know, I just came back. Sorry, mom, mom is taking kiddo away. Um, been working with the event directors to finalize everything. And since it has been such a weird year, we knew what the events have been like in the past. For example, Sea Otter. We know Sea Otter is moving to the fall, but in the past, Sea Otter has been a five-day event. We likely don't have to assign Sea Otter as a five-day event this year. So having those conversations to determine exactly what those staffing needs are um, and make sure we aren't assigning way too many people or giving the understanding of, yeah, you're going to be working for four days when it's only actually a one-day UCI race. So uh, that those have basically been finalized and those will be going out this week for the national downhill calendar. I'm going to be talking with Tara, uh, probably tomorrow morning just to figure out needs for that. As you guys all know that they weren't included in the initial assignment request. So as soon as I have an understanding of what we need there, um, I'll get those sent out, but it will be separately. Uh, but I do, I will go ahead and say from what I've seen, it only looks like one of them is UCI. So we may have a smaller assignment base for the, the downhill side of uh, our races this year. And we just announced the uh, downhill calendar this week. And uh, so everybody understands, I think this leads to the next question, Tara, for you is I'd mentioned it yesterday. It's been a very difficult time and, you know, we're trying to do assignments, races are moving, we don't want to put the new dates out in the assignment pool because then they're public and it's just real balancing act. Terry, you want to talk a little about how we're handling the question came from Bonnie, how we're handling early season races moving to summer and fall, which, which is a good thing uh, because we're actually going to have them. We just heard this morning uh, from one of the races about where they're moving, but Terry, get a little oversight on, on how you're handling this. Sure. So um, I'm sure you all have seen uh, the early season races are juggling around and looking for either summer or fall dates. And that really does apply across the disciplines. Um, we've seen a number of road races, including uh, stage races and one day criteriums moving from March and April. And now we're starting to talk about the May events that are looking at contingency dates. But Basically, if you looked at our internal calendar, um, we, we take a look at that and we have everything on that calendar from non-sanctioned popular races to other domestic highly popular events to what's happening in Canada, what's happening uh, on the world calendar. And if you took a look at July, August, and September, there, there's all these colors, there's overlapping on every weekend. So we're taking the information that we have now, which is people knowing that they have to move due to their local restrictions or just concern from teams attending. Um, and we're trying to place them. Typically we've been July, so late July, August and September. Um, we are very thankful that folks are looking at moving. We haven't had any straight up cancellations at this point in time. Um, unfortunately, that means that our late summer fall is going to be really, really packed. Um, we've been working with the NTC in order to get the word out as to these date changes as they've been confirmed to us and then approved by the UCI. So there could be a lag in when a press release is sent out regarding a date change and then you know what's happening in terms of changing the crew if it's been assigned or not. So bear with us as we're working through all of this. Like I said, the majority of March and April dates have already shifted to, to later dates. And we're now just kind of looking at how May is going to play out. Great, thanks Tara, that's super helpful. Uh, question from Chris, I'm gonna send this to uh, Rob first, who by the way is, you may see a palm tree in the back, uh, just so everybody can be jealous. And then uh, probably for, for more of the strategy and then a little more for the tactics to Stuart. Uh, Chris is asking about the uh, local association. He's running for a position with his local association board of directors. And uh, the question is, what's the role of the LA both now and in the future? What can we do as the LA to help us meet our common goals? So Rob, you wanna start with that? Yeah, first of all, thank you. And, and uh, you know, the LA, uh infrastructure, I by no means am an expert, 
but I do see the passion and the, and the volunteerism that's out there uh, as something that we can harness more effectively than we have in the past. Uh, I think Stuart's already started better communication, more frequent communication. Uh, I do think you'll probably see the LAs naturally consolidate a bit, uh, but still play an important role uh, in the future uh, to try to drive the USAC agenda, if you will, and, and the We Champion initiative in particular. And I think as the Let's Ride and, and other programs develop and we re-strengthen our role with clubs, I think we'll find how to best level associations in the future. They continue to be the point I'm trying to make. Did I lose everybody? No? Lost my connection yeah, a bit. Back, and uh, Stuart, you want to follow up on, we, we made some changes on how we're working with LAs, how they're being reimbursed. Stuart, you want to cover that a, a little bit, sort of what the goals are as opposed to our traditional model? Yeah, so uh, so the tr traditional model, I think everybody knows, had, uh, had uh, been focused on um, rebates for membership sold. Uh, and then a smaller stipend for uh, rider days uh, that, that came in. Uh, Chuck and I, and we, we had discussed this with a few different groups as well. Um, you know, we see that the sport is shifting. I think a lot of people have seen that where there's uh, just a broader participation base, uh, especially as we work on a lot of the junior initiatives with um, mountain bike racing. Um, and also as we broaden our, our reach with uh, working with gravel and Grand Fondos uh, around the country and more charity rides. Uh, and so with that in mind, you know, we wanted to uh, have the local associations look a little more broadly uh, towards uh, those disciplines. Uh, and uh, so what, we, what we're doing in 2021 is uh, we've just gone to a Rotter Day uh, stipend uh, or uh, surcharge or, or rebate that comes back. There's too many of these terms and I should should have these all memorized and, and spit them out just right. But uh, with the uh, with the Rotter Day rebate, um, it, it, that will come from all disciplines uh, it, it, that have traditionally not been uh, covered under the LA rebate program. So uh, mountain bike uh, races and rides will be covered uh, and the local associations will get a rebate for that. Uh, and, and really the goal is to, to, you know, reach out and start to work closely with those groups. Um, just like you have with road, cyclocross, and track uh, in the past. Uh, they're great communities. Uh, and I think there's more uh, common ground to work through this and broaden the outreach uh, to get uh, more cyclists engaged um, not only with USA Cycling, but also with the local associations and what is happening uh, in the local areas. So um, that, that's where the, the focus has shifted. Um, and I think a lot of people uh, that we've talked with, with certain, um, certain LAs that they are uh, pretty confident or sure that races are moving forward, uh, at least uh, with the mountain bike side, are embracing this and starting to see uh, you know, some positive communication there and some work uh, and, and some greater outreach efforts. So, um, so anyway, that's uh, hopefully that, that covers it, Chuck. Great, that's awesome, Stuart. Uh, Rob, I'll kick this to you because I'm tired of hard questions. So <laughs> uh, for Noreen, we talked about IT yesterday, as you know, in the early part, but uh, we talked about yet IT challenges yesterday. Uh, they've been exacerbated because of the pandemic. What's being done to invest in this and to ensure that all the interfaces are easy, work as intended, and keep the platform relevant? Uh, this has been an ongoing problem for years. Uh, and I've got a couple of follow-ups, Rob, to what you're going to say. So, Well, I think, uh, you know, you referenced it yesterday. The uh, coach's license re-registrations was way harder this year than we'd hoped. I don't think it's completely fixed yet. Um, but we are trying to dig in and figure out exactly what's causing these difficulties. And a lot of it is um, multiple databases over the years that have been collected and then customized for us. And I'm a huge believer of moving us to off the shelf technology and adjusting our business and business practices to uh, software that is 
run for us and others by third parties that make a business of it. If you think about QuickBooks or Gusto or any of the things that are used to run small businesses, we are, you know, even in our best of uh, vision, a small business. We should not be customizing software and then having the responsibility to maintain it. So that's how we got into this hole. Um, I wish I could tell you exactly how we're going to get out of it. I don't know the answer to that yet, but I am committed that we will get out of it. Uh, and uh, I think the, the work that, that Chuck and Booker and Dan, uh, who runs IT, are focused on right now is to try to make life easier on you guys as customers and quite frankly half of this team that's pinned right now that ends up cleaning up the mess when we don't do it right so uh, we don't have all the answers yet uh, we are committed to understanding the problems better so we can fix it great thanks rob and i'll add in I mean, one thing that we've really pushed for is uh simplification and i think officials are a great example of that i would challenge any of you to go to someone who's not official and explain our category system within the officials ranks and all its permutations. You know, I'm a, I'm a C mountain bike, I'm an ENC road, I'm a motor P, but I don't have to pay for the motor P because it's included in mothers and I'm this in this one category and not another. You know, we understand it, try explaining it to a programmer. It is really difficult. And uh, that has caused definite issues this year as we, what happened this year is we moved uh, our officials uh, purchase path off of CCN, which is an off-the-shelf solution that wasn't so off-the-shelf, onto our own systems, and that's come with uh, come with some issues. So, uh, and part of moving to an off-the-shelf system is trying to simplify some things. But we all know what's going to happen when I say, uh, you know, if, if you're an A, you're an A across the board, and that creates issues for us. And uh, those are things we have to juggle with. That's going to, I think, carry into Chris Black's question about uh, online chief referee report working again. Uh, we actually sort of do, Chris, it's the post event report, which I'll let Stuart touch on for our new permitting system. We have done a webinar on that. And Stuart, I think we probably need to uh, do a follow up with the officials for the, for the post event. The, uh, I'll give you an idea. Yesterday, I talked about things we just don't have the bandwidth or money to do a great example is the occurrence reports. Uh, we want to build an electronic, we have this system and specs built out that was awesome. We even wireframed it where it was on your app. A few officials on here helped us with it. It was on the app on your phone. It tied into the event permit. It saw your location. You could take a picture of the accident scene or the injuries. You could, all you had to do was enter someone's comp ID and it filled all their information in. I mean, just, you know, it would take time off what we're all doing. Uh, then we went to spec it out and we figured out that by the time we built that and maintained it, it was, and we looked at the number of occurrence reports we get in, it was over $20 an occurrence report. Uh, was that the best spend of money? And uh, I'd rather put that money, money toward other programs. So we, you know, we took a middle step and we just built a nice clean new PDF occurrence report and took a bunch of stuff off our old one. And that's what's posted online now. So those are things we'd really like to do and have it. Stuart, you want to give a brief uh, overview of sort of the, the new permitting and the, the post event for officials? Yeah, so um, so with permitting, and, and I just shared the link to the webinar that we did um, at, near the end of uh, 2020 uh, regarding these two systems, but um, we did cover both permitting and uh, the post event form. And uh, one of the, uh, I think one of the, the nice features um, you know, moving forward is uh, officials will have a little bit better access to the forms and communication and information all in one system instead of having uh, tons of tons of emails going back and forth between Belicia or um, you know uh, the organizer or everybody involved. Uh, and uh, with that uh, in mind, we can assign the chief referee uh, in in the new permit system. Uh, that gives you access. Uh, to everything, and then, uh, and that's all documents, uh, course maps, anything that can be uploaded, uh, which uh, you'll see in the uh, in the webinar if you watch that. And then you'll also have access to the post event form online uh, through the same uh, overview for the permit, and, and that is very similar to the, the form that we had previously, uh, but in a I think a cleaner format. 
uh, and you'll be able to uh, upload accident reports uh, or occurrence reports, uh, waivers, if those were um, signed on site. And uh, you'll be able to answer the questions, submit the, uh, submit the information uh, for rider day counts. And, uh, and then, um, you know, it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you have time, please watch that webinar. And Chuck and I will look to schedule something that's more specific uh, and probably splits these two topics up. Uh, we, we do have a few, few features that'll be coming out, uh, especially around our new uh, organizer initiative uh, that organizers can qualify for a uh, slightly discounted insurance rate. And there are certain questions that will be in the post event form uh, that will be answered. Uh, and so uh, chief referees will play uh, an important role with that uh, to verify things uh, and uh, submit all the information. So uh, I'll also share that uh, organizer initiative because I don't know how many officials are aware of this if you didn't watch the insurance webinar that we did a few weeks ago, uh, but this is good information to have. Uh, I know many of you are part of the LAs as well, so you've seen this, but uh, we'll share it again because it's a, it's a document that I think uh, shows our commitment to try to work with organizers uh, to do key uh, or work on key items that we think can achieve uh, common goals for growth. Uh, and then the organizer will be rewarded with a, a discounted insurance rate. Yeah, and Stuart, we did cover that yesterday. We, uh, and uh, I've, I've said that's another great topic is especially the, the way officials are gonna be on the race side uh, helping us out with some of that, for instance, the novice uh, program. So we'll get that one together, which I think is going to be timely. Uh, Vince asked about mountain bike A and road A class. So I mentioned this a little yesterday, give you a little more detail. We are looking at doing a road A class. Uh, our initial thoughts is we're going to run that with the pro championships in Knoxville, uh, which is in June. The way we've done that in the past is uh, we've had classroom that we've taken a there will be probably a day at the time trial, a day at the road race to actually take uh, the students out and put them in a car and to you know let them see the start of the time trial uh, is a really cool experience. And uh, we just got a little bit of due diligence to do. If we don't do it there, we're going to look at maybe something later in the year. We're in an event that you can get that similar uh, look and feel. Uh, and, and you know, it, based on what you heard Randy and others talk about being in that car and seeing what happens. Justin, you want to talk a little about, uh, it's still a, a little bit of a, a dream of how we're going to go, but Justin, you want to talk a little about your vision for where we want to go with the mountain bike A? Yeah, so in the past, uh, for all of you that have gone through the mountain bike A upgrade modules, it's been a pretty big pain in the rear end of Excel quizzes and uh, sign off modules. So we're not gonna get rid of that, but I've turned with our learning management system, I've turned that into a much more user-friendly version, uh, which will take staff time or National Technical Commission's uh, time out of it, of having to review because it'll all be self-graded. Um, but we also still wanna have the ability to host A courses, just knowing that they are very difficult to, to do. Um, unlike road, where if we have the road A course in Knoxville, it's easy to fly in, get a cab over to the hotel, and you don't have to have a rental car. But as you know, most of our mountain bike races aren't in the middle of a city right next to, a uh, right next to an airport. So the <clears> costs <throat> become much higher for the participants and us to uh, host that course. But we're aware that having that on-site experience is still good. So what we're going to try to push to is an online course, whether it be the module system through uh, the LMS or just an online Zoom course with then a follow-up, bringing those officials on site and not working them as an apprentice, not working them as an official, but using it uh, almost assigning a third type role of evaluation of you go through you're there, you're gonna get passed around to every single person on that crew for the event to get experience day in, day out of how to work the event as, as an A or as a, at the national UCI level. Because uh, what we've seen sometimes is at the, the apprentice level, you just get thrown into one position and you kind of just get uh, stuck with horse blinders on for that one position because we sometimes don't have enough staff. So the hope is to be able to get somebody there and literally just, uh, um, 
shadow every single position from the chief down to the assistant ref in in the pit so that's what we're working on and i'm going to be in communication with michael donovan our uh, on our ntc who's also an international on the mountain bike side to work on this and, and see what we can get built out great thanks justin a couple of just last questions uh the uh question count how we're going how you can watch recorded sessions we have people on today one on yesterday uh, it'll probably take us some time to break this recording up into segments. We will, uh, that'll be posted on our YouTube channel and we're gonna try getting the individual sessions. And then we will also have, have the links to those on the, uh, the website, on the official section. Uh, question on getting a license or membership is an official. Uh, Justin was working with IT Friday and we're hoping to have that cleaned up in the next week or so. Uh, we will get an email out. You can purchase online right now. Uh, it's just not a very elegant customer service friendly uh, situation. Uh, if anybody does have a need to get their membership immediately, you can uh, you can do that, or we have a paper form that Valicia is happy to take. And uh, she's she, I can see her cringing right now because she's run a ton of them through in the last couple months. So uh, we can we can get you taken care of. Don't think you go without a, uh, a membership. We're just trying to bug squash. And the last one I have on my end is a, uh, there was a question that came about uh, rule books. Uh, we made the comment yesterday about, you know, keeping your rule book in your back pocket. And, you know, Randy brought it up again on his thing of what do you know, does that rule book hit somebody? And, uh, you know, we, I, I want to make sure the message is right here. You can't, you, you should be referring to the rule book when you need to. Uh, what I told this person who emailed me was, it goes back to craft and knowing your craft and being knowledgeable and knowing the big rules and knowing how to find things. And I'll just talk about perceptions. There's a perception of you knowing the, the regulation and how to apply it in your brain. And there is walking down the start finish stretch of a criterion, holding the rule book in your hand, paging through it, right? Everybody's watching and think about perceptions of you and your knowledge base when you're doing those two things. I joke that that's why I like mine on my iPad now because it looks like I'm just a string, you know, look at the web. It can go in and look at my rule book. Uh, that said, it's important to have and it's important to, to have access to. I hope everybody gets a little idea. I mean, one of the things that impressed me most is a, a new official was, I was a big international UCI stage race and uh, there was sort of an argument amongst the order of priority for a leader's jersey because there was a tie at the end of a stage going on between the judges and the chief officials of one of my, one of the most respected officials in the world, guy from the Netherlands uh, comes in and he, he just immediately knew uh, just with, it was second nature say, no, this is how you do it. Boom, 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 boom. He, he just knew. And I think that's important for all of us to keep in mind. That said, there's some er esoteric stuff in there. Uh, I reference the rule book every day. So don't be afraid to use it. It's just how you use it. Keep in mind. Uh, any other questions? Anybody on audio want to jump on? Uh, just in regard to the uh, license purchase right now, there has been an issue of purchasing and getting all of your categories upgraded to your highest level. Um, so if you see that, don't worry, it's not going to stay, but also don't think you're going to get a cheap upgrade either. So uh, we will be fixing that if you do notice that. Um, if you can just shoot us a note at the official's email, we'll get it taken care of. International commissaire for everybody. So, All right. Well, I want to thank our staff for jumping on on a Sunday. Uh, uh, Robert asked real quick, new rules 2021. They are coming. I'm about two thirds of the way through them. Thank you to the folks who've helped. Uh, thank goodness we're not racing yet because uh, I, I haven't just have not had time to get to them. It's on the on the chart for next weekend to finish those up and we'll do a webinar on those. We're not doing printed rule books. I'm just gonna say it here, we're saving trees. Uh, what I will do is work up a uh, work up a little FAQ if you do feel like you need a hard copy, how to print these out most efficiently. Uh, it just became very expensive and uh, it's the 21st century folks. We're going digital like the UCI, so. Uh, I want to thank our staff for jumping on and uh, spending some time with us today. I think it was uh, super helpful. 
and uh, all our presenters and folks who help facilitate this. Thanks a bunch. This is our last uh, bit of seminar. We are going to uh, send a survey out. Uh, Justin will help work that up and we'll send that to everyone who is registered. And uh, I think this was a, uh, you know, a, a, a good pivot for us as far as having this online. As I like to say, we talked about challenges and opportunities. We had a challenge with COVID that we couldn't do this in person, but uh, we had 160 people on yesterday, which is a huge amount based on how many officials. So it was a great opportunity. Would love to hear back from you all. One of the questions will definitely be in two years, do we do this in person or do we do it on Zoom or we do some combo? So uh, look forward to hearing back. With that said, we are uh, done and wrapped.